Recently, Loki's second film has come to an end in the explosion of anti-culture towards the unique god of mischief. Although Loki's story will still continue in the multiverse saga, however, for fans who have followed the role of Tom Hiddleston from the first days, the journey of the character of Loki has been completed in a very neat way, fulfilling the ages when the god of fire must lie at the hands of Thanos. In today's video, let's watch the movie together. Looking back at all the glorious moments on the screen of Loki Lofi-san. Ah no, Loki Odinson. Find out if an egotistical actor who only dares to look at Mjolnir with jealous eyes. How did you become the most powerful god in the MCU? And before we start, Coolness has a promotional program in December. Reduce 30k for orders above 349k. When you enter the code W2W30K, you can refer to the link on the side of the comment and not to waste your time. Let's start the video together. Let's go. Loki. We are all familiar with Loki and Thor, the famous princes in the heart of the Asgardian people. However, Loki is actually a young man found by Odin after the battle between Asgard and Jotunheim ended. Carrying a poor boy who was abandoned by his parents, Odin took pity on him and brought him home to raise him like a son. Although it does not have a large shape like a giant, Loki's appearance still originates from Frost Giant with its characteristic green skin. Therefore, in order to avoid unnecessary rumors, Odin used a trick to make Loki look like a normal Asgardian. In the Old Testament, Loki grew up with Thor and Bodr. Although Bodr had never been seen before, the princes were raised with love from both Odin and Freya. A warm embrace at home has left a trace of heritage in the princes forever. The biggest turning point for the family only happened when the king had to make a difficult decision. The king was chosen for the simple reason that he was a son not a matter of strength or wealth. They were born to be kings, but unfortunately, there was only one Asgard king. Deep down in his heart, Odin didn't worship Thor because he was a boy. He probably didn't expect that his decision would have a serious consequence, because Odin always reminded the two brothers about the meaning of peace. If the heart is for peace, then whoever sits on the throne won't be able to change anything. Odin's mistake here is probably due to his closeness to Thor. The evidence is the difference in the development of the two brothers. Thor is a Viking warrior, while Loki is a god of mischief. He grew up with a lot of support from his mother, Frigga. She taught him everything about magic, love and nation. But that wasn't enough to pull Loki out of Thor's shadow. Loki may not have reached the golden age, he was just jealous of his brother's love. Even when he saw Thor's immoral nature, Loki was eager to prove his worth. He was also worthy of being a king. Loki is the main character, in order to see the great things. In fact, Loki can divide a parallel way to touch the recognition from Odin. However, according to the confession of Loki himself, no matter how hard you try, Thor will always take the lead. Confused by the thought of being full of doubts, Loki gradually became a man full of dreams, ready to do anything to hurt Thor, no matter what disaster it may cause. A lesson learned in society has shown that if you can't get yourself up, find a way to take down your opponent. Loki loves Thor, but because of the recognition from Odin, the god of deceit has made his image look bad in the eyes of the boy. Even though a period of time is enough, Loki has decided to play big on the big days, where Thor officially takes the throne from Odin to destroy the coronation ceremony that was welcomed by the people. Loki designed a murderous plot to distract Odin's trust in the successor. Specifically, the god of deceit will open the gate for the big guys to infiltrate deep into Asgard, their goal is nothing more than the Cascade of the Ancient Winters, the John Hamm's treasure that Odin took after the fall of King Lothi. The invasion was complicated, with numerous casualties for both sides. Thanks to the destroyer armor, the situation was quickly under control. But Thor, in the heat of the moment, changed his mind and launched a war against John Hamm. What made Odin unable to accept it? This conflict was what Loki had anticipated and even made him more scared when he pushed him to the top. On one hand, he took Odin's heart. On the other hand, he tricked Thor so that his brother would go to John Ham to ask for Lothi's guilt. Thor's arrogance was then exposed in the land of Icefield. Finally, it came to Odin and made him angry again. Because of his incompetence, he summoned all the escorts. He regretted Thor's strength and affirmed that he was still not worthy of being a king. Then he pushed Odin to the ground. Everything could have gone according to the script that Loki directed. However, in a very strange way, as soon as the golden day was in front of his eyes, the god of deceit discovered the truth about his origin. Loki was a son of John Ham, and this truth had answered him. To answer all the thousands of questions that Loki has been asking for thousands of years, Odin has always seen Loki as a boy, 
being born as a boy will never be comparable to being raised as a boy. The downside of this is that Loki's role is too sensitive in this situation. As the descendant of King Lofi, and in simple terms, we can understand that Loki was adopted to become a bridge between Asgard and Jotunheim. Loki's reproachful words come one after another. Odin only knows how to hold a candle and then dive into his long sleep. Loki may have imagined everything, but if we put ourselves in the position of the traitor, we can't help but overthink. With Odin falling into a state of power outage to kill magicians, Loki is obviously on the same level as Asgard, because there is no humanity to choose from. Instead of being subjective, Loki decides to completely abandon Thor, not in a bloodbath, but as a tactic to become a teacher. Even on Earth, Loki has created an indescribable psychological blow for the brothers when he announced that his father had been killed by the Lothians. Thor is a major contributor to the war against the Ice Lord. This lie shattered Thor's world. He's been trying every day to prove his father was wrong when he pushed him to the ground, but there was no father to be seen. Loki was even more evil when he added that Frigga had forbidden him to return to ensure peace for Asgard. Loki's atrocity made Thor fall immediately he couldn't return to his homeland. Or more accurately, there was no reason for the god of war to do so. Satisfied with his own stupidity, Loki said goodbye to Thor and went to John Ham to finish the last part of the plot. Here, Loki revealed himself to be the spy who opened the door for the frost giants to invade Asgard. He had made friends with King Lothi, then proposed a deal that would benefit both sides. Lothi only needed to kill Odin, sleeping drunk on the path that Loki had laid out. In return, John Hamm would recover the treasure, Cascade of Ancient Winters. Realizing the deal was too much, King Lothi kept nodding his head not knowing that he had been tricked. Returning to Asgard, Loki was immediately hanged. Heimdallr was investigating the mysterious castle, but now, Gaia was king, and Heimdallr was known for his loyalty, so he was banned from the fight. What Loki didn't expect was that the Warriors Three, along with Lady Sif, traveled to Earth to inform Thor of the truth in Asgard. Knowing that his brother would soon destroy everything, Loki had no other choice but to shut up all those who could threaten his throne. Accordingly, Loki decided to use the Destroyer to destroy the Chaos. Known as the Destroyer, the Destroyer must have known Thor's fate for a long time, and didn't know that this was a journey to Earth. After all, on the day of Asgard's conquest, King Lothi suddenly found Odin drunk and received a telegram from Loki. The judge wanted Frigger's mother to see the scene above because in her eyes it was no different from the actions of a hero. Dreaming of a bright future, Thor with the power of the dark god appeared. Frigger rushed to save Thor despite the fact that he had just saved Odin Loki's feelings. Loki seems to have taken the bait only with his mother's small actions. So from the beginning, it's always Thor, Odin, or Freaker. In an almost hopeless attempt to prove himself worthy of being Odin's son, Loki has done a lot to shoot Thor out of the palace then used Bifrost to destroy John and Ham once and for all. The battle between the two brothers then broke out. The victory was on Thor's side, making Loki's ambition stand still. Bifrost's bow was shot down by the undead, and Odin suddenly roared to save the two nobles. Looking into his father's eyes, Loki said, I did that for Odin, for everyone. But Odin bit his own son once again with a tearful look. Faced with his disappointment, the fool only knew how to let go of himself in the middle of the world, while screaming for help from Thor. Everyone thought Loki was gone. Only Loki himself was fed up with this life. Only Thanos realized a time to punish the entire universe. Approaching the fallen prince of Asgard, the Mad Titan offered to cooperate. There was no other way but to obey Loki's will. Specifically, Loki will be supported to rule the Earth. If successful, the Tesseract Stone will be taken by S.G.I.E.L.D. In this negotiation, the Earth element is the main factor that convinced Loki to accept Kale. He knew Thor loved this planet, and the best way to take revenge was to put him in a cage. Thanos' whole scheme here is to give Loki the Power Stone with the Mind Stone inside. Although it is very useful, the huge power of the stone made Loki's evil be magnified every time he used the Power Stone. Thanks to a very good play from his partner, Loki interacted with the prophet Eric Selvig, helping him to improve the ability of the Tesseract, and most importantly, to develop the equipment that can concentrate its power. When the time was ripe, Loki ordered Eric to activate the Tesseract, creating a gate leading to the Earth, right in the headquarters of the Pegasus Project. Loki also trained a number of people about his subordinates, including S-Shield's best agent, Hawkeye. The next step of the invasion plan was to make it open by the Tesseract, through a discussion with Eric and Hawkeye. Loki decided to go to Stuttgart, Germany, where they would find the necessary material, Iridium. 
As a god of Asgard, it's easy to understand Loki's appreciation for the inhabitants of a desolate planet. Along with that, Loki was furious with the gala ceremony and then asked the crowd to kneel at the feet of the gods. It seemed like a piece of cake. When Loki was about to show his face, an old man stood up to whip his ears. Every word was like a blow to his pride. Loki raised his sword and punished the criminal just in time for Captain America to step in. Not only Captain America, but also Iron Man and Black Widow were there to stop Loki from making any more mistakes. At that time, Thor often believed from Frigga that Loki was still alive, so he didn't say much and flew straight to Earth to look for Goff at mischief. Coincidentally, Thor landed directly on the force that crushed Loki and the god of Asgard, of course walked away with his brother, in everyone's astonishment. Meeting his brother in a rather awkward situation, Thor expressed his condolences because Loki was still alive. He begged him to let go of the Tesseract, to let go of the poisonous dream, and to return to his home. To go back to his home. The sincerity from the person who has always been selfish has made Loki a bit weak. But then Iron Man intervened to turn the story into a battle for him. They fought for a while in the forest, and then they agreed to teach Loki about S-Shield's airship. As an escort, there's only harm happening on Earth. Thor cares about this planet, so maybe it's okay to go home a little late. Even though Loki was pushed and moved, we were too familiar with the ability of the God of Deceit. In Eshield, there's a slow exploding bomb, and only Bruce Banner and the Chief of Eshield can easily distract Loki. Then, when Hawkeye and his underlings approached the successful airship, an explosion was triggered to ensure that Bruce Banner was out of control. The Avengers had to split up. The side was worried about the Chief of Eshield, and the other side was worried about Hawk. Taking advantage of the chaos, Loki used the illusion to trick Thor into the prison. Not only did he stop there, but he also cruelly stabbed the chief of Shield in the back of his neck. Although this case is still unresolved, let's go back to Shield. To buy the next season of the show, Loki's ship launch was a success, but Hawkeye had to get out of the clutch. Now Eric and the rest of the crew are ready to go. Tatori's team is preparing to land on Earth to invade the planet. The pair then landed at Topstock, where the gate is about to be activated, thanks to the Tesseract. Tony also took the time to talk to the Fire God before the battle began. Through this journey, we know that the Mind Engine has formed the whole, the Avengers. It's not just because Loki is still mad at Odin and Thor. The Fire God had to force the Earth's enemies to surrender, because if he hadn't, it wouldn't have taken that long. Loki, from time to time, is forced to lose his cool just because of an old man or a few words from Tony Stark. Throughout the war in New York, Loki seems to have completely lost his mind and lost contact with the Titori. It's said that Loki doesn't know the meaning of this invasion if Thanos doesn't threaten him. Even when Thor comes to war, Loki's mind is that they can still stop Thanos if they cooperate with each other. The fire god was moved when he turned his head to the shore. It's a pity that the too relentless zeal pushed Loki to turn his back on Thor once more. Loki stabbed his brother, then fled when the Dark Lord lost consciousness. However, the battle with Loki has come to an end as the long-awaited scene below Stark Tower is a missing Hulk. It seems tense. However, Hulk pointed at Loki as a play that left the crowd speechless. Sleepy for a while, Loki opened his eyes and saw the Avengers, ready to fight. Alexander Pierce was also there to arrest Loki and the Tesseract, as it was the evil of the Earth. Therefore, Thor rejected this request to deceive Loki with Asgard's violence. Not long after, the two brothers returned to their home in the cozy space of the Avengers. The Tesseract was in the storage, and Loki had to face the person he didn't want to face the most, Odin. Overcoming his stubbornness, Loki affirmed that fighting the Yellow Knight was his destiny. Immediately, Odin rebelled. Loki's only legacy is the cold, lonely death in Jotunheim's labyrinth. According to Asgard's rules, Loki will be executed, but Frigga's bodyguards begged Odin to create a precedent. God of Mischief will spend the rest of his life in prison to pay for all his sins, and worse yet, he will never see his mother again. Throughout the trial, Loki's only joy comes from watching the new prisoners being taken to the river day after day. Reading the book sent by Frigga, it was thanks to this silence that Loki realized how much Thor and his mother loved him. Frigga did everything for Loki to be at ease, while God of Mischief fixed the damage the Fire God caused when he destroyed Bifrost. As Frigga said, Loki is always deep, always showing everyone to the core, but with himself, he can't understand. When Thor The Dark World premieres in 2013, the audience will have a hard time grasping all the meaning behind Frigga's mother's decision. What does Loki really want? This mystery remains unsolved until more than a decade later. 
to realize his glorious answer. The quality of the footage is gradually revealed more clearly in Loki's personality, but his hatred for Odin is still not enough time to sit still, and this is what makes Loki have to pay with the mother he loves the most. The story is when the Dark Elves attacked Asgard. The name Curse of the Demons provoked the Netherworld to free the Marauders from the prison. Witnessing the potential to defeat Odin, Loki did not hesitate and showed the way to the enemy. Asgard's last force still won, because Malekith had failed to obtain the Aether weapon. However, the price to pay was too high when Frigger was killed by the Dark Elves. Upon hearing the news of the battle, Loki went crazy and broke his armor and fell into a state of shock. The God of Deceit not only regretted for indirectly causing her death, but the last memory between the two was that Loki had decided that she was not his mother. The situation slowed down, and it was time for Thor to come to persuade Loki to help him. The God of Deceit took the roads to Asgard, and the two leaders could not be recognized. They will go to the Dark Elves, and their only goal is revenge. For Frigga's mother. Though he agreed to help, but throughout the journey, the two brothers did not avoid conflict because of a head that lost a loved one. This incident was just an accident, but it became a plan to make Thor attack Malekith's army again. Unexpectedly, at the time when Jane Foster was hit by a black lake, Loki took care of himself to save the girl. This is an unbelievable change, with a character who only a year ago had claimed to be a human being. Not only Jane, but Thor himself was also saved by Loki from the curse, and then he was stabbed by the enemy. Thor decided to take his brother, Sian Loki, and he would tell his father about this hero's actions. However, Loki affirmed that he did not do that for Odin, but because he really cherished Thor. The God of Thunder has fallen, but the game is not over yet, because this is just Loki's second death. As soon as Thor and Sian left, the phantom disappeared, and the fire god transformed into an escort soldier on a mission to return to his homeland. Death is a long shot, but the belief helped the fire god to draw up a new plan to fulfill his dream of becoming a king. The end. In the first part of Thor will not be repeated, but instead, waiting for the god of darkness means a game full of trust from his brothers. When returning to Asgard in the form of a soldier Loki, in a state of dismay told Odin that they had found the prince's body and were angry at their own end. Next, Loki used magic to push his father out of the king's position and disguised himself as Odin to start a new era for himself. Still as careful as ever, Loki has eliminated two people who are at risk of threatening the king. The first is Lady Sif, because sooner or later, the soldiers will also feel uncomfortable. The second is Hamdal because the relationship is too complicated between the two. Scourge was brought in to replace Hamdal with the simple task of reporting Thor's location to Loki. As for the body, Loki had ordered Odin to give him the freedom to act, which will keep Thor wandering around the world to protect peace and often stay away from home. Four years have passed. Loki appears as a hero of the people because the High Prince is built according to the traditions in the hearts of the Asgardians. King Odin only knows how to eat and enjoy, and one day... Just like other days, Thor has suddenly returned, but Scourge did not inform him in advance. Just arrived, the god of evil has planned a prank to lure Loki and force him to take off his mask in front of the gods. The two brothers then traveled to Earth to ask Steven, strange to check Loki, the ugliest statue in the nearest planet, was released by Dr. Trunks in 30 minutes when talking to Thor. Thanks to the wizard's magic, the princes met Odin again on a desolate plateau. The graceful beauty of nature, the tenderness of the hands, again made a foundation for the moment of disintegration into the vast grass of the king of Asgard. Looking at his two children for the last time, Odin praised the god of Loki. Although he escaped from it, Frigga was also very proud to see such a play. Loki was not surprised, because this was the first time his father really praised him. The brother finally had the recognition and self-discovery from Odin. As the children are always loved by Odin, the two brothers need cooperation to fight against Hela their sister, and also the last wish that Odin sent. The king of Asgard was defeated, but not in time to be sad. Hela was there, greeting her like a little sister, by breaking the Mjolnir with her might. The feeling was so good, the princes were running to the escort, in a situation where the sister was stabbed right in the back. Not knowing if it was lucky or not, in the middle of the flight, Loki was thrown out by Hela to another planet, called Scar. Here, Loki had just escaped the disaster and was about to go up to the escort. So, he became a guest loved by the Grandmaster. He was excited about life, preparing for a new adventure, where the gods would go to battle with their people every day about his glorious life. Suddenly, Thor was captured as the Grandmaster's leader. 
Not stopping there, the nightmare that Loki never forgot was that the Hulk had somehow appeared in the battlefield to be Thor's opponent. Afraid of losing face, Loki ran away from the guard and only showed his face when the Grandmaster gathered his men to hunt down the Hulk along with Thor. Just like this event, Loki met a Valkyrie, even the last surviving Valkyrie. Both of them fell into a battle, and the end was the failure of the god. Trapped in a room, Thor and Bruce later appeared to discuss about Loki's death. About the plan to take down Hela. Banner was reluctant to trust Loki, but Thor said he'd take care of it. On the mission, Thor and Loki will take a ship from Grandmaster to move to Asgard. On the way, the two brothers had some time to talk after so many incidents. Loki said he was fit to stay in Sakaar, and Thor thought it was reasonable. It wasn't just the first time they were in love, but Thor also shared his dream of the two of them fighting side by side. These words were proof of Thor's trust in Loki. He'd never been a shadow of a god, and never will be. A little confused when he heard his brother's love letter, Loki made another mistake. But this time, Thor was in the lead. The god joked that Loki had become too predictable, not just a step ahead, and almost stopped at the god of mischief while he could have achieved much more. Because Thor was in the lead, Loki waited with the rebels to move in a giant spaceship. They took a giant ship to evacuate everyone in Asgard to protect the gods. In the worst case scenario, when Loki was about to land, he reached out to the crowd and said, their savior has arrived. Heimdallr couldn't stand the look on Loki's face. Despite that, his gaze on Loki was completely positive. To stop Hela, Thor realized that the only solution was Ragnarok. Asgore would fall, but their god was still alive to start a new era. The god of faith gave Loki the responsibility of reviving Surtur, while the whole team would take Hela's place. Loki jumped into the Tesseract to join his team on the ship heading to Earth. Loki became the last prince recognized by everyone, including Thor. More than anyone else, Loki was excited about a new kingdom of new Asgard, where he truly belonged. But his joy didn't last long. Thanos' money arrived, and Loki knew what was waiting for him. With overwhelming strength, both Matt Tyson and the Black Order, two of the MCU's children of Thanos, slaughtered half of Asgardians on board. Hulk and Thor were left helpless, forcing Loki to hand over the Tesseract to save the lives of the others. In the final scene of his life, Loki cried out the name and the word Odinson, a proof of his self-esteem for being Odin's son, Thor's brother, and Asgard's prince. Defeated in the assassination of Thanos, Loki faced a heart-wrenching death for all those who witnessed both inside and outside the screen. For those who have drawn God of Mischief, they are of course not satisfied with this ending. They agree that Loki has completed his salvation quest. However, it will be difficult to avoid the character being cut off when he has just escaped from the role of God of Mischief. Marvel Studios has imagined the ending they will receive as it takes place in Infinity War, but it is not a cruel act. Kevin Feige still accepts to do so because Loki deserves more than a hero will fight against Thanos. Writers in the film industry all agree that it is time to write a dialogue that popular culture can only use classic words to describe. In Avengers Endgame, Tony Stark's mission to return to New York in 2012 has failed, accidentally creating a misunderstanding. Loki, who had just been bewitched by Nordon, accidentally picked up the Tesseract block to escape. This detail made everything go wrong later in MCU and so a new timeline was created. The block shifted the fire god to a desert, where only a few seconds later, a mysterious group of people stepped out of the doors, suddenly appearing from the air. The B-15 crew blamed Loki for disrupting the timeline, calling him a mutant and asking him to cooperate. Thinking this was a joke, the fire god kept a high-profile attitude and then received a black and white picture. Sent to TVA, an MCU timeline protection agency, Loki was explained in detail about his origins as well as why he was here. After changing his prison uniform to prepare for his escape, Loki was taken to see Ravana Renslayer, a judge who accused Loki of jeopardizing the timeline. Not knowing what was going on, Loki is still adamant that if you're brave, you're only brave because you're the god of mischief. As for the timeline with the multiverse, I'm fine with it. Feeling powerless without saying a word, Loki still uses magic to escape himself. However, in TVA, such a concept does not exist. At this time, Mobius's subordinate suddenly proposed to Ravana that they could use Loki as a collaborator instead of cutting him off in a wasteful way. Mobius's interest in Loki is because another variant of him is also causing chaos over the entire timeline, and TVA is in dire straits in capturing him. Both of them then joined hands to the Time Mirror, where Mobius gives Loki a chance to see his entire life, even if it's a scene that will happen in the future. While being approached by TVA, Loki is still falling into a critical crisis, 
bringing deep hatred to Odin and Thor. Therefore, seeing Frigga's death caused by himself, and then the defeat at the hands of Thanos made the audience seem to be dead. Loki always fantasizes about his greatness. However, movies about life have proven the opposite. Loki tried to escape from Morbius, but Casey and the ice blocks in the way made the fire god realize how small he was, and TVA knew what he was doing. Even though he was disappointed, Loki didn't seem too disappointed. On the contrary, the character smiled when he saw Odin say he loved him. Or when he cut ties with Thor to fight to protect the people of Asgard, did Loki really want power, or was it love, a recognition from everyone? Not knowing what to do next, Loki agreed to help Morbius to track down that dangerous mutant. The deeper he learned about the universe over time, the more he was forced to compare himself to Loki. Was he the worst mutant of all Loki's mutants? Back to the capture mission, Loki used a genius brain to discover that the person he was looking for had used a trick to get past TVA. Specifically, this mutant may be hiding in a place where TVA is about to happen. Because if TVA happens, everything after that will be wiped out. Time will not be divided, despite the other mutant causing chaos. After Mobius confirmed this theory, they rushed to a storm in 2020, which is where the mutant was hiding. Everything became more and more interesting with the emergence of the mysterious woman, a female version of Loki. The woman, after wasting her time with stolen technology, used Tempest to move to TVA's base. Without hesitation, Loki continued to exchange martial arts with the female mutant until Ravana appeared. Afraid that the judge would make a mistake, Loki activated Tempest to move the two to Lamentis, a planet that was about to enter a time of stagnation. Rescued because of Loki's distraction, the female mutant named Sylvie rushed to get the Tempest back. Loki was quick to let her go and did not forget to draw the energy bar. To find a place to charge, the two mutants had to work together. Gradually, Sylvie also began to feel more comfortable in front of Loki's harsh attitude. On the other hand, seeing Sylvie running away, living alone since she was a child, the male version realized how lucky she was to have a warm family. As happy as that, Loki was overwhelmed. The pair would be stuck with the resident of Lamentis, or if it's more black, the color of the same day. In an attempt to survive, the two found another missing ship. However, everything was too late. Loki apologized to Sylvie for ruining her free will. On the side of the goddess, she also did not blame anything for the transformation. Sylvie lived a life full of sadness, and maybe this is an ending to end all fatigue. Looking at the situation, Sylvie asked Loki if it was right for a Loki to be born to be a loser. The father had an emotional cycle, from a childish failure in New York to a dream of a life not as great as he thought. Loki realized that they could fail, but Loki was a survivor. Even Sylvie stood up for them in that. Every word, every sentence seemed to imply that they had to cherish the important things that they could lose. Hearing Loki's consolation, Sylvie gave birth to a strong romantic feeling for her transformation. Loki is famous for being selfish, but when it comes to himself, no one can guess. A nexus event was created between them, and the Minutemen used this signal to move to Lamentis. Loki and Sylvie were defeated by TVA, but Ravana only wanted Sylvie, so she pushed Loki into a time loop. Here, Loki met the woman he didn't want to meet the most, Lady Sif. The warrior girl kept punishing Loki over and over again, and never forgot Loki's will to live a lonely life. It's always like that. After going through a lot of hardships, Mobius forgave Loki to continue the interrogation process. The liar kept repeating what Sylvie had said before on Lamentis, that all TVA agents are mutants, and timekeepers are the ones who stole their lives. Mobius only knew Loki's serious smile and attitude because she was crazy enough to believe in a liar. However, the daily company with Loki made Mobius doubtful. The agent himself tested the Tempest belonging to Ravana and convinced him that his team had become true to TVA. With the help of Sam P-15, who was previously brainwashed by Sylvie, Loki and Ravana were able to save the day. Has discovered the true nature of timekeepers. They are statues, and they don't know how to speak. As soon as he lost consciousness, Loki was trampled by Ravana with the time bracelet. The god of deceit seemed to have disappeared after being erased. Suddenly, he woke up in a mysterious land, and there were four other Loki variants waiting for him. This land is called the Void, a wasteland that collects things that were erased by TVA in the corner of time. Loki was greeted by classic Loki, kid Loki, bossful Loki, and the ugly Loki. The whole team decided to help the newcomer escape from the Alioth monster and bring the god of deceit back to their nest. After a few short conversations, or more specifically, a battle between their variants in the void, Loki realized that the most unique point to form a Loki is always kindness, even if it's just for the sake of pity. 
but to create punishments that have no purpose. Not long after, the Loki team quickly broke up with Sylvie and Mobius. They both agreed that TVA's mischief needed to be solved in different ways. Mobius would return to the base to deal with Rabona, while Luki's team had to eliminate Alioth to advance to the final stage of the game, where they might be able to show them the truth about GBA. Everything didn't go as well as expected, as Alioth's strength was beyond imagination. The main reason was that the stage belonged to classic Loki, a rare mutant in the void that had seen a good influence on the God of Mischief. With the ultimate power of God of Mischief, classic Loki was able to create the true God of Mischief to the point of deceiving Alioth. Alioth left and the gate was opened in front of Loki's eyes. The duo had been silent for a long time, along with Mischief's applause. They were ready to strike the final blow, which made them tense. However, the final blow of TBA, he who remains, that Sylvie was waiting for, was just a serious lack of character and not as scary as they thought. Welcoming the guests warmly, he who remains explained the plot to Loki about the timeline, as well as revealed to them that the reason for coming here was all part of the plot. Sylvie hated the opposite because he had stolen her life. However, the death of he who remains also coincided with the fact that the destruction of the timeline. Furthermore, it will open the way for a multi-universe war with inevitable consequences. Taking the initiative, he who remains sent a request for cooperation. Loki and Sylvie became the TVA rulers. The whole gang will keep the timeline safe, gentle but not harmful to the Empire. Both Loki and Sylvie were shocked by the meaning of the collapse of everything. However, the goddess survived too many disasters to realize that he who remains only replaced this nightmare with another nightmare. Despite Loki's prevention, the goddess pushed the lover through the time gate. Then she killed he who remains in spite of the threats of the gang. Over time, the gang began to lose control, and Loki returned to the TVA just to find out that the ruler along with the TVA officer had been completely changed. There were no more typical timekeepers. The TVA interface was covered in the color of he who remains. And more importantly, no one remembered Loki as a monster. This unusual behavior made Mobius rush to chase Loki. The liar didn't have time to explain, so he just ran away. In the middle of the chase, Loki jumped into a working room where Casey was sweating profusely. Suddenly, Odinson was stopped in the air and moved back to that room. The only thing is that the scene with the person here has changed when Casey immediately recognized her friend. At this time, Loki realized that he had just moved back to the past in a self-destructive way. However, the priority is still to solve the consequences of Sylvie's actions. Thanks to Casey pointing the way to the war room where Mobius was working with the leaders, Loki continued to be pushed back into the past and then discovered He Who Remains' burial process for Ravana, along with the statues of Gara printed on the wall. Using this evidence, Loki removed TVA's artificial nature for all judges when he moved back. The liar thinks that what they need to focus on is fixing the division of the timeline. There is no point in chasing Sylvie anymore. Despite Loki's plea, General Doc still has his own motive in arresting Sylvie, forcing the B-15 and Mobius ships to leave the ship. For Mobius, he needs Loki who remains, a friend who hasn't been moved for a long time. Together, they go to the technical room and meet Obi or Ouroboros, the knight who is responsible for all the time technology of TVA. Using his knowledge, Obi quickly realizes that Loki has lost his time sleeping, a phenomenon that theoretically does not occur in TVA's database. Using Loki's past and present, Obi uses this trick to invent a device that will solve the problem of time slipping. Then, when time is running out, Loki will use the time stick to erase himself. At this time, Mobius will approach the temporal loom, which is called the heart of TVA, to bring Loki back. The plan went well for Mobius, but Loki was too busy looking for the time stick to commit suicide. A phone ring and Loki met Sylvie again in a completely new form. Before he could say a word, someone erased Loki from behind to bring him back to Mobius. Solving the time-slipping problem, he was able to save Sylvie. Loki quickly found Sylvie, partly because he saw her in the future, a sign of a reunion between them. But at the same time, B-15 spawns a huge swarm of dogs. Next is Brad, an old spawner with the X5 label. The whole team has teamed up with Sylvie at a McDonald's store. Contrary to expectations, the goddess straightens out Loki's face and advises him to go home because it's all over. She has a new life, so does Loki. There's nothing left for both of them. In essence, everyone understands that Sylvie's new life is only a matter of time. However, no one but Brad knows that Dox's real plan is to erase all links to protect the timeline. Because of this fear, Brad reveals the abnormal behaviors through which Sylvie uses magic to discover the truth. 
With the help of He Who Remains, the three teams quickly move to Dox's base, successfully fighting the swarm of dogs. But they're just a step behind and are witnessing billions of lives being taken. And the delete button is starting to blink at a faster rate. The death of He Who Remains has caused the groups to explode, which has directly caused the machine to be overloaded in the process of loading and loading time. Obi's solution is to increase the speed of the machine, but it's only obvious that the anti-explosion gate needs more time, or we can call it the aura of He Who Remains, to unlock it. The only survivor in theory is Miss Maynette, with the ability to access this AI's system. The last time they met, Kofood was on Ravana's side, so she followed A's sign. Loki and Mobius went back to Chicago in 1893. At the science fair here, the person they were looking for appeared. Not just one, but two. Because of the presence of Victor Tamley, a mutant of He Who Remains was created by Ravana. The little girl realized that Obi could use Tamley's time. A scientist who hasn't turned evil like He Who Remains, Loki quickly changed his plan, but didn't expect that Sylvie had also landed in Chicago. In contrast to Ravana and Loki, Sylvie just wanted to cut off the roots of the traitor, so Tamley had to die, even though he was just a human. After a series of dramatic actions, Sylvie finally agreed to let Timely go back to Loki. Not because she believed in TVA or anything, but simply because that's what Loki really wanted. With a precious item in Chicago, Loki brought Timely back to TVA to cooperate with OB to rescue Zed. While preparing, how come Timely was curious about the coffee machine that was hijacked by Miss Minute and Ropona's team? Zed's coffee machine exploded, and Loki and Ropona had a hard time finding Zed. The chaotic scene in TVA then separated the two of them. At the end of the corridor, a phone rang to tell Loki about a familiar scene that he had experienced. Surprised, hoping that someone would pass by, Loki met himself again to escape from time slipping. When he got here, he realized that he was no one else but the one who saved his life in the past. After finishing the job, Loki and Sylvie quickly rescued Timely thanks to the magic that OB had removed the barrier when restarting the system. It didn't take long for Loki to get Timely out of Zed's machine. But right at the first steps, he remains body was torn to shreds. Seeing this reality, no one spoke a word. The machine exploded. Loki just closed his eyes, helplessly waiting for the other disaster to take over everything. A few seconds passed. The light from the explosion also faded away, and Loki somehow remained unharmed while all the others in TVA were missing. More worrisome, the time-slipping disease was back, and this time, it could have transformed him into a completely different life of B-15, KZ, Obi, and Mobius. If all the characters in TVA don't remember anything about Loki and just laugh at his story, then Obi is the only person who listens. In this life, the engineer has become a phenomenal scientist as well as a physics teacher. Therefore, the words from Loki do not make sense at all. Both of them argued to find a plan, which is basically to save the timeline. Even so, Loki's body is still vague with a real purpose behind it. Is the universe as dangerous as he imagined, or does Loki have a motive? To get TVA back on track. Obi then had two tasks that Loki needed to do. First, time sleeping, and at the same time, bringing his friends back to the same room. This would help them find their way to TVA. It wasn't hard for KZ or B-15, but in the case of Mobius, Loki had to face a freedom that was too far away from him. Looking back at what happened, the journey to find Loki that his fans were familiar with, and the concepts surrounding the god Thor, had a very significant role from Mobius. Unlike all the normal relationships that Loki had experienced, Scion Bras in TVA was built entirely based on mutual respect. Right at the time the Disney Plus movie was released, Loki's foundation was a sensitive god with a judgment from Odin, a distant BS guardian, and a desire for recognition to prove himself worthy of the throne. The feeling of respect may be the far-reaching value for Loki at the moment. Along with that selfish thought, perhaps Loki was also surprised when Mobius, a stranger, became the only one. Has seen this villain in the eye of the beholder, instead of being a false god. Mobius gives Loki a chance to be himself, but he doesn't have to be afraid to show himself or to express his feelings towards the other person. From Mobius's perspective, Loki comes as a motivation for him to continue to dream about his personal beliefs, which we all know were abandoned by he who remains so that the officers could continue to maintain their jobs and protect the timeline. Like a jet ski, Loki is also a representative of the freedom of desire that is always hidden inside Mobius. Gradually, their story develops in a way that one person obeys the rules, while the other finds every way to break those rules. The contradiction between Mobius and Loki is evident in the fact that any relationship can be tighter, deeper, by letting the shortcomings complement each other. 
Mobius hopes to be free and free in his own way, while Loki wants to have a place for him to live, determined about it, like Mobius, even when it means Loki's life. We can see the death of Frigga's mother, then the recognition from Odin's father. Or the sacrifice to protect Thor during the time warp has created a turning point for Loki to find his way back. However, only Mobius, along with its beautiful properties, can create the path for the best things about Loki to become true. Back to the film. Loki finally convinced the trust in Mobius and only the other member, Sylvie. The challenge is supposed to be even more difficult when the goddess of mischief always shows her stubbornness with her trust. As soon as she stepped foot in McDonald's, Loki realized that Sylvie had actually left with He Who Remains Tempest, not being reset like the others. They both spent some time sitting down at a local bar where they calmly resolved a long debate that lasted for the second film. Accordingly, Sylvie represented her free will, ready for TVA to be canceled, because that was the only way for her to have a meaningful life, just like the other mutants. On the other hand, Loki thought that they needed to control TVA so that everyone had a choice about their fate. He who remains blamed the act of his stubbornness, but Sylvie refuted it. Is Loki's idea really that good? Loki really just wants his friends back. Fighting for TVA also signifies the existence of the God of Deception. Loki is a young boy who was pulled out of the war. The incident in New York accidentally gave Loki a chance, and he knows TVA is where he belongs. Sylvie sympathizes with Loki's pain. However, she still refuses to cooperate. Maybe it's time for them to write their own story. When her ex-husband looked down on her, Loki came back to the base. In the same state of mind, a person who had given up everything. He encouraged everyone to continue with their lives. And no matter how much he wanted to start from Loki. Unexpectedly, as soon as Loki had just spoken, Sylvie moved in to announce the destruction of McDonald's. Hoping to catch Loki's eye, he can still aim for a living goal. However, repeatedly from his friends around, she was torn to pieces. Refusing to accept this truth, Loki cried out in a loud voice. The space was reversed, and Loki somehow slipped back to the moment when Sylvie first met him. A time-sleeping device, like a keychain, helped Loki realize that his true nature is not where and when, but the answer, who he is, and the correct answer. Once again, Loki travels to the past, the time when Obi just sent Charlie out to rescue the jet engine. He has tried hundreds of times, spent centuries, but the jet engine being shot down seems to be an absolute point that cannot be avoided. No matter how much they increase the volume, with the limitless production of time, it's just meaningless. If everything is too late, let's go back to the time when everything had not yet begun. With that in mind, Loki returns to the end of time, marking the first meeting with He Who Remains. Loki tries to convince Sylvie of the consequences of the action she is about to take. Even the fact that Sylvie surpassed He Who Remains is also an absolute point that Loki cannot influence. To make matters worse for the main character, He Who Remains has paused time and revealed the truth about all the lies that he has and is facing. This is actually a script written by Time Slipping is a tool given to Loki to perform it. Not only that, we also know that the Time Slipper plays a role as a safety device. When the Time Slipper is in a state of overload, it will automatically destroy all links to preserve the safety for a short period of time. Loki now has the right to decide for the fate of the universe. He just needs to remove Sylvie, maintain the existence of He Who Remains to keep everything normal as if nothing had happened. In this case, Loki chooses to destroy Temporal Loom so that the entire timeline has a free will, which will open the door to a cruel space-time war, and He Who Remains affirms that nothing will remain after that war. Unable to make a choice, Loki goes back to the first meeting with Mobius himself when he was brought to TVA. In the timeline, Loki wants to hear from Mobius about the issue of choice. Specifically, the destruction of the timelines means the murder of innumerable innocent people. So how does Mobius make a difficult choice? To live or be exterminated? In response to the transformation, Mobius recounts an old story where a butcher couldn't slaughter a child and later became a murderer that killed thousands of people. The butcher was deceived by his emotions and was taken to the gallows. In the end, his partner had to kill the child after too many butchers had to die. Despite not being called by name, Loki is still considerate enough to think that the two characters mentioned are Mobius and Ravana Reislier. Most of the purpose is to be a burden, not a glory. Ravana knows that the hard work even when it's impossible. If we don't choose to avoid it, we can only be a burden and accept to live together for the rest of our lives. Saying goodbye to himself, Loki travels through time once again to talk to Sylvie. He has also had a profound influence on the version of God of Mischief. 
Sylvie understands that he has to kill her to stop the destruction. However, until his last moment, freedom is still a burning thing in Sylvie. The goddess grew up in the next day. She had been through enough to know that sometimes destroying something is fine. The death of he who remains will lead to the destruction of everything. Then what? He will only replace this nightmare with another nightmare. Once again, like romantic movies in Lamentis, Sylvie asked an interesting question to her male variant, which makes Loki become Loki. Is it that they are destined to play the role of the loser or not? At that time, our liar, as well as Sylvie, could not give a convincing answer that would lessen their misfortune. For the audience, we are tired of Loki's seduction. Long before Multiverse Saga was released, there was always a feeling that this character was only created to serve for Thor's development. After many years of sacrifice in Infinity Saga, Sylvie's question has been answered, which fans have been waiting for a long time. The Lokis are not destined to be losers. They were born with the mission to accomplish glorious goals. From the outset, they are all selfless gods always humble and humble about their greatness. There are differences between Loki, who will become the god of story, and the lost mutants in the void. Unlike the god of darkness, Sylvie's stubbornness from the moment she appeared has completely crushed Loki. Putting Sylvie aside made Loki have to expose his unnecessary and dark sides. As Frigga's mother once said, Loki always understands people deeply, while himself can't. If Sylvie's relationship with Loki is not that deep, then the problem of the universe has been solved very easily. Love has made it impossible for Loki to make a difficult choice, even though everyone knows that Sylvie is just a minority in a big war. Love and compassion are two completely different levels of emotions. When we love something, we just want to choose it selfishly, and it's very hard for us to want to own what we love. On the other hand, when love is so deep, we will not only love madly, but also want to be responsible for that love. Loki loves Sylvie, loves Mobius, as well as the rest of TVA, the emotions that Frigga has emphasized year after year. Nevertheless, in this situation, the only way to love someone is to love them. The only thing Loki can do to reciprocate that love is to protect and protect. The bravest person is not the one who dares to confess, nor is it the one who learns to forget the person he loved. It is sympathy with the obsession that he cannot be with the person he longs for. Love has helped Loki make the final choice. And of course, these feelings have made what he who remains has been calculating for a long time become a laughing stock. Loki has returned to the moment of destiny when Victor and Sam Lee are preparing to step outside and set up a communication machine. Odinson is looking at his teammates for the last time and is not hesitating to step out of the machine. This time, the phrase, for you, for all of us, for everyone, for all of us, has just been added by Loki with a lot of meaning. Odinson is eager to destroy the machine, freeing all the fears of time around him like a web. Using his powers, Loki gathers them together, turning himself into a point of contact for the entire time branch, opening a book on the structure of time. Loki returns to Cyrodiil at the end of time. He has created a golden day for himself, becoming he who remains in the true sense of the word and keeping the entire MCU universe alive. Loki sacrificed himself to choose the path of a lonely god, However, his friends are safe and can continue their long journey of their own. That is the purpose of the glory worthy of Loki. God of mischief has made their culture have to suffer, and then tired to the point where Han is an invisible shadow. Cinema is a field of art with a heavy emphasis on time. Enjoying superhero movies at the gates of adulthood always brings a strange feeling when we are in our teens. Many years later, the next generation of audiences can watch Loki's entire journey in one night. It will still be a masterpiece and full of layers of emotions, but the feeling of waiting for another year to see Loki come back to life, accompanied by God of Mischief in every scene of the film, will be a value that can never be reproduced. Tony Stark can only be Robert Downey Jr. Logan must belong to Hugh Jackman, and it is also difficult to imagine that another person will receive the horn hat of Loki, not Tom Hiddleston. God of Mischief didn't go that far. However, it was the personality of the actor that led to the revolution in the image of the character. The audience, more than anyone else, are those who can clearly feel the color of Hiddleston. And not by words, Tom reshaped Loki, turning the god of deceit into a special breakthrough throughout the development history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And this is the end of Loki's glorious journey on the big screen. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next videos. Way to wear out.